it's that time again for us to figure out our schedules and get with Brian Pigman Quaka and take him out hunting a few nights with us on our place with the kill lights. Brian has a lot of fun, you know, just like we do, but the thing is he's not as much of a night owl as we are, so we have some setups for him to hit early in the night. Hopefully he can be successful, then we'll bring him back to camp about midnight. <laughs> Tuck him in, let him get some rest, and as far as I'm concerned, we'll just keep hunting. Condition. Lights out, stomping on competition. My utmost to his highest, it gets no flyer. Uh oh, we set the mainframe on fire. Cold red for the left from the pedal. I push to the metal, the dust never settles. F5 level, kick up the base in the treble. Cause faith, that's a rebel. I can show you the devil. I blaze a trail like the rays from tail light. Sound shaking the ground like earthquakes and hell might. Someday I'll die, but not tonight. Excuse me while I. Hey, one of the times we look forward to every year is trade show season. Get the trailer out, we pack up all the goodies that we want to bring to you, show you the new products. We get to meet all you guys and gals, put a name with a face. It's also where we see our industry professionals, and one of those would be Pigman. Brian Pigman Quack is there. But that's the best time we can get together and try to actually all be on the same page, try to put a schedule together. We can actually get out to the ranch and do some hunting. But every year it gets harder and harder. You know, we all get pulled in different directions, especially when we get really busy. You know, finding the dates to work for all of us is, is always a challenge. Well, by the time the dust settled on this deal, you know, we had moved the date three or four times. The only date that really worked for all of us was early summer. Now, I say all of us, but really I mean most of us because one of us, meaning me, got left out. Now, I know that wasn't the plan, at least I, I hope that wasn't the plan to leave me out of the hunt, but all I know is that Pigman's in for a treat. He's not gonna believe how bright the lights are, and how good they work. And also, I mean, I guarantee Chad's gonna put him in some primo spots to be able to bust some hogs. I'm just a little bit down that I gotta miss out on this one. Left Scott behind, went to the hill country without him, waiting for Pigman to roll up, man, so we can catch up and uh, get his gear unloaded and try to put a plan together. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Have you got it dialed in? That's the question. Because you know how I like to hunt all night. Yeah. And sit out there. I'm, no, I know you got it dialed in. I already know, man. This is one of the better trips that we get to do every year, you know, because uh, I know you guys put a lot of time and effort in, and you got the products. It's like you bring out more stuff, more stuff all the time. But you know what? One thing I can tell you, no matter where we go in the country and, and a lot of places uh, overseas, especially Africa, uh, products everywhere, man. I know you're shipping a lot of stuff everywhere, but. Oh, yeah. So what? what's the plan? Well, I've got the, the usual spot that you go to where you always have good luck. I actually uh, put two of our new outfitter lights up in red and a uh, nice little close chip shot. Should be, should be easy. I got uh, chip shot. We've got cameras set up on all the uh, feeders right now and I've been monitoring them for the last few months. So I know where all the big hogs are. I know what time they're coming in and I know where to put you. So hopefully we'll get you a good hog. So any of you people hogs. that's watching this show, whether it's mine or his, that wants to invite me out to hunt, 
you can rewind that part of what he just said. See what he said, cameras and, and monitoring and this. That's what got, well, they got it dialed right in, man. They, uh, no, they don't. If you don't have cell cameras, you don't have it dialed in. You have to, what he said, you have to monitor, you have to stay on top of it, you have to know exactly what your wind direction is gonna be because you're not gonna ever fool a pig one time. I know everybody gets mad, but when a hog comes into a setup, they know what's going on when they come to that feed. So anyway, all that being said, man, I'm glad to be here. Good to see you again. We get to see each other at trade shows, but we don't ever get to see each other in the hunting circle. That's the thing. A lot of people that do what we do, you just screw Busy, man. man. A, lot, know, of, a lot, lot of work goes in before you get to play, you know. So uh, we're gonna unload, <clears throat> and I hear the AC units are running. Got them running. And I'm gonna Cooling down. sleep in Scott's bed because I got a little surprise for Scott. All right. <laughs> You know, this is the third trip for Brian out to our place and every trip he's had success. You know, his first year out, we put him on a setup that we call the WAG. It really wasn't a setup that we hog hunted much at all. I mean, it's really more for whitetail hunting. You know, we put him in that blind to try and get a deer. You know, he had a couple bucks come in, but you know, the deer thing didn't work out for him, but there was a lot of pig sign there too. So we just decided to hunt the same blind at night for hogs. That's the big one right there. Like, he's facing us right now. You sure? I'm in a bind here. Okay. Yes, I'm gonna kill that hog when he turns broadside. Got him. Yes. That's a done hog. Big hog. Shot perfect. Listen, get the light. We'll do all the talking in a minute. We got more pigs out here. You know, the second trip out last year, we knew that he was going to want to hunt the same spot again. So Chad and I went in during the early spring. You know, we set up a blind cider and we put some corn out on the ground. Got the pigs coming in pretty regularly. So by the time Pigman arrived in late summer, it was pretty much a slam dunk. And we knew that hogs were going to show up when we sat there. Right behind that deep post with them side lights. I mean, he's had success every single time at the WAG, so that's his go-to spot. And you know, same is true this trip. We're gonna put him in the WAG, but man, we got some bad thunderstorms rolling in the area. The radar is lit up. We just don't want to chance it because we know it's a good spot. So we have another spot that's a ground blind he can get in in case it does rain. It's really close to camp, so he can get back to camp house if you know he has any problems. There's mosquitoes everywhere, man. If you look at this hill right there's a pond on the other side of the hill. This is like ground zero. A 
Brian's in his stand, he's all settled. The weather looks like it's holding up for the time being. I know Pigman, he's not gonna hunt late. That leaves a lot of hunting for me. I have a lot of spots, great opportunities. One in particular, I've got our cameras out, getting some pictures of some big pigs at the 76 as a cow pasture, pretty much on the back of the ranch. And uh, I'm gonna head over there and hopefully try to get a hog in before the storm hits. Well, it doesn't always happen like we planned. Man, we had a cow come in, run that hog off. There's a storm. I mean, lightning's like crazy. It's right on top of us. It's about to start a flood. So we're gonna we're gonna get out of here. But I mean, the wind was perfect when we got here. Got the thermocells back behind me on this tripod. I started smelling them all of a sudden. Felt the wind on my neck. Man, I knew it wasn't good. We're gonna go back to the camper and let this uh, storm pass. It's still pretty early. Maybe I'll get some more hunting in tonight. I'm feeling alive for the first time in my life. There he is right there. Get there on that corner. Look at that tree. Look at that. I mean, yeah, this is like a landing strip. I like to see this from the air because they got these setups all over the, the ranch. That's the uh, outfitter. And then they got these little, the small ones over on the, on the thing. But you see, it's got a solar panel on the top and it keeps it charged. I mean, it's, it's a friggin', it's guys, it's, it's guys that know. It's guys that know what they're doing. This ain't the first time they ever done this. So they know what they're doing. And what we got to do is, I can tell you, that's the bad stuff right back in there. Ooh, that ain't going to be good. Ugh. All this stuff dead falling. Ugh. It could, and it could possibly be that I call it off tonight. And uh, we come back when we can see with some help. From the looks of the footage, one thing I can tell you is that pig is dead. Pigman made a great shot. You know, but I know this, he's not going in after it because where he shot this hog is the thickest of the thickest stuff on the whole property. It's the same spot where Chad and I shot a hog maybe three weeks ago. There's a lot of rattlesnakes over there too, especially at night. You never know what you're going to run into. And I know this, Brian does not like the snakes. He's not going to be anywhere around where the snakes are if he can help it. It's definitely a dead hog, but uh, that's about as far as he's going to go. <laughs> it looks like buzzards are going to be the way we find this hog and I guess we'll look for them tomorrow. Hey, the rain last night washed away the blood trail, but the sun's up now. We're gonna get over there and see if Pigman can't find this hog. All right, we're down in Mosquito Alley right here back, Big Daddy. Funk Funkerson. There's a solid trail right there behind Matt. We may peep up over this pond then, but we've been all back in here. That hog shot right there last night. He came right through here, and we, we went there and there. 
And uh, I'm going to just tell you, man, this spring, this thing is four down in this draw. It's full of snakes. And I don't know how to buzz. Matt was in front of me about 75 yards. It was a small snake to my right, but we're not getting bit, man. So this is why, this is not a deer setup. This is on the edge. They deer, they set the deer up in the middle. They pull the hogs up to the edge. They kill the pigs so the pigs ain't hitting their deer feeders. And they kill some really nice bucks here. So they just want us to come down and shoot up some hogs. And uh, that's what we did. So we got one shot and uh, we're going to go out tonight. No trailing. Right in the side of the head. Right under the green lights. No snakes. They ain't having it. It's been tough. You know, the weather hasn't cooperated. We've had some bad luck. You know, it's set us back a little bit, but the hogs are definitely hitting the feeder and we still have plenty of spots that we haven't even touched yet. There is no doubt in my mind that the action's gonna pick up. You know, there are just too many hungry hogs out there right now. And between Pigman and Chad, you know, they're both hunting some of the best spots. Things are bound to get crazy. It's pretty safe to say, if you wanna see some hogs die, you don't wanna miss next week's show. You know, there are a few things more enjoyable than a well-tuned smooth bow. When you shoot it and let that thing go and you watch that arrow fly like a laser, it's just an incredible experience and an incredible feeling. And conversely so, I don't know that there's few things more frustrating than when you're in your backyard and you're letting that thing go and that arrow is porpoising all over the place and you don't know how to fix it. I have spent hours in my own backyard trying to figure this thing out on my own to no avail. And that's where a good pro shop comes into play. You gotta get with people who really understand how the bow works, how it's supposed to operate, and they can generally diagnose it and fix it pretty quickly and get you right back on path. But you know, I see the same thing in life. There are so many people that are frustrated with a poor life experience and they, they had a different dream for the way their life was gonna go and it's just not going that way. And they want it to fly straighter and they want it to fly truer. And they're tinkering with all of these different things, trying to figure out, well, if I just bought a bigger house or if I got a bigger car or if I got a better relationship, life would work for me. But the truth of the matter is, you have to go back to the one who created it. If you really want to know how to fix the things in your life that aren't flying right. And the Bible says that that person is God. God gave us life. God gave us the gift of life and he created it. And nobody knows how it's going to work better and best than God himself. The Bible says if we seek righteousness in his kingdom first, that all these other things will be added unto us. In other words, when we connect with God, everything in our life gets back on track and we begin to find the most fulfilling and rewarding life that we could ever experience. And we hope that that's what you would encounter here at Elusive Wildlife. If you'd like to know more about a personal relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ, just go to elusivewildlife.com and click on the Moment of Truth tab. Cut me like those words you throw.